Hi, I'm Alan. Welcome to the McSwain Estate Toys Vintage Barbie Story Hour. Shot live here at the Tootie and Chris Playhouse. Today's narrator, Alan, is going to read from Barbie and the Ghost Town Mystery, starting with number three, Backyard Barbecue. Backyard Barbecue. Barbie Roberts sat alone at the pool's edge, idly watching the group of noisy, noisy bathers splashing and cavorting in the jade green water. Her skin, after a week in California sun, had a golden glow that blended with the honey color of her hair and contrasted smartly with her trim black bathing suit. From time to time, she took her head, making her hair fly furiously. In order to dry the last damp strands, the gesture also helped her keep her mental seat belt fastened to the reality of where she was. Her father had to make a flying business trip to the West Coast, and since it was Christmas vacation, he had brought his wife and daughters with him. The Roberts family had left a winter world of snow and icy frost back home in the Willows. Here in Los Angeles, a week before Christmas, they swam comfortably in an outdoor pool. It was lovely but unbelievable, and it sometimes made Barbie feel upside down. Suddenly, two wet hands reached out of the water and pulled at her ankles. No, stop it, Barbie shrieked, kicking free just short of toppling over the edge. A head appeared over the concrete rim to grin at her. Almost got you that time, Skipper boasted. The freckles of her young sister's nose stood out like dark pin dots on a map, and her sopping hair clung cat-like to her head. Come on in, join the party. I've had enough, Barbie said contentedly. I'm dry. Okay, Skipper said, and splashed off leaving a wake of churning foam. Barbie smiled. Skipper's stroke was choppy, but at least she always got where she wanted to go. Another head bobbed to the surface at Barbie's feet, and a husky, sun-bronzed body pulled out of the water with a great flexing of muscles. He was Pete Murchison, 18-year-old son of their host. Barbie had peered down at her, squinting with squinting his eyes. Then he groped toward a nearby chair, fumbled through the pockets of a jacket, and flipped on a pair of thick lens glasses. Ah, it is you. With my astigmation, I couldn't be sure. He grinned at her. His brows relaxed. If you had turned on to be turned out to be the little mermaid of Copenhagen, I would have been slightly off course. Pete stretched flat on the warm brick walk beside Barbie and inspected her at close range. I see you're human after all. Two legs, no scaly fishtail, 
a living, breathing, perfectly formed female specimen genus. Homo sapiens. Barbie grinned back at him. Definitely no fishtail, she said, but I'm not so sure about the sapiens. From the barbecue a few feet away, Pete's mother, a plump, vivacious woman, called to Barbie. Don't let him tease you, dear. Our junior scientist looks at all of us as if we were bugs under glass. After a while, you get used to it, but the first time is a little appalling. She was preparing shish kebab, but she stopped to wave long, a long-handled fork at her son. Behave yourself. Yes, ma'am, Pete said, but he winked at Barbie. Barbie's mother, who was helping Miss Merchinson, said, Barbie, can you take care of her? Barbie can take care of herself. Can you? Pete asked. Try me, Barbie said with a quick toss of her head. The Merchinsons were a wonderfully wonderful family. Barbie's father had been a college classmate of Bruce Murchison, and though the two men now lived half a continent apart, their friendship remained warm and constant. Over the years, they had visited one another many times. To Barbie and Skipper, the Murchison boys, Larry and Pete, seemed almost like brothers, at least until this visit. Three years had made a startling difference. It had nothing to do with the boy's appearance, for example. The fuzzy, head, fuzzy beard on Pete's chin was obviously the object of his affection, and Barbie had had the good sense not to laugh at it. But it was not the beard that had changed. Nor was it fun-loving Larry's surprising dedication to serious music that had changed him. It was something less definable. Alan now holds up the book so that the kids can see the picture. Barbie and Pete by the pool. No, Pete and Larry, to use a grown-up expression, had matured and Barbie hoped fervently that it had happened to her soon. Everybody out of the pool, Miss Murchison called. A Chinese brass dinner gong hung from a tree branch and she rapped it sharply, sending silvery chimes echoing across the garden area. Chow time, she sang out. Chow time! Bruce Murchison and George Roberts swam the length of the pool once more. Skipper flipped end over end like a playful porpoise and only stopped when Larry dove beneath one of her flips, caught her on his shoulders and carried her, screeching out of the water. Catch, he said to Mr. Roberts and tossed the wriggling Skipper into her father's arms. The only reason I'm giving up the fight is because I'm so hungry, Skipper declared, gasping for breath and shaking water like a wet puppy. Barbie, she called to her sister, I'll give you a five-minute handicap and still beat you dressing. Any time, Barbie picked up the challenge with a laugh and they raced the lawn and into the home. These two dolls Todd and Tootie, brother and sister, will be dressed in the Sunday treat outfit. They are included in this mega lot auction. Keep watching.